Okay, this is coming to you a week late, but we're getting started here with talking about our February Garrett's Games plays, so stay tuned. So how you doing, honey bunch? Very good. How are you, dear? Hey, we made it through February, shortest month. Had your birthday in it. Woohoo! Yeah, that's true. All right, now we got to slog through March. <laughs> yeah. But it's okay. We got our first shots because we're both teachers. Yeah, so we're, we're going to so be back lucky. in the classroom, which we're is so good, and, you know. But uh, well, I've well, already been back in yeah, the classroom. Yeah, Shelly's been back so. forever. So, yeah. but I'm going to instead of teaching from this exact same spot that we're talking <laughs> to you from, I will be going to the classroom and teaching hybrid. So that's going to happen in April. But we did get a few games in, short month, but we got eight different games in. So let's start talking about them. Why don't you start with the first game that we got up? Well, this game you can see is quite beautiful. It's called Canvas. It's by Jeffrey Chin and Andrew Nerger. Nerger, yeah. Nerger. I think so, yeah. And the artist is Luan Hyun. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned the artist because it is a beautiful, beautiful artistic game. So many of you are probably familiar with the game Mystic Veil with the plastic sleeves that get put in and different game, you know, different uh, cards layered so they get different values. Right. Well, this one, you're making a painting. So you'll start with some backgrounds. Actually, you're making, in the two-player, you're making three paintings. I think it's three no matter what. Oh, okay, yeah. cool. And then you have different design elements. Oops, I grabbed too many. But so there's <laughs> these plastic um, inserts that get put in and you put them together and it makes a painting. Yeah, as soon as you have three, you can, uh, you, though you get a hand of five, so you get a little bit of choice. And then there's your painting. And but you're trying to get certain things that are, are being asked for in the game. So right. it might be one of every color, or it might be have certain symbols, yeah. certain symbols next to each other. Right. So there'll be different um, expectations that each game allows for you to try to work towards. Yeah. And um, then, of course, you end up making some very beautiful paintings and you should give the game a try. Yeah, and um, Shelly didn't show it, but on the back of the game box, oh, yes, you actually I... can hang this game as a painting because it's, it's got, got a little, a little hook, hook. So you can hang it on your wall. It's pretty uh, cool. And also the, the pieces are great too. Yeah, there are the paint definitely. palettes and mm -hmm. every little bit is artistically beautiful. Yeah. And, oh, I made a, game, a name for my painting. You made a name? Oh, that's right. Uh, and yeah. each one, not only do you make a painting, but this one's called Scorched Curiosity. <laughs> so that's Canvas. All right, so my first game is from Iron Games. Now, Pandoria was a game that came out a few years ago. Mm -hmm. um, Jeff Allers and Bernard Eisenstein, uh, designers for, Eisen, uh, for Iron Games. Iron Games, Bernard Eisenstein, that's his company. Now, they've done a few other games that we would definitely recommend. Aliyah Iakta Est is mm, one of Shelley's favorites. I love that game. It's right? wonderful. They okay. have Heartland, which was a really good one. Oh, yeah. Um, New York Slice from Jeff Allers, uh, which oh, is also Abibitimit San, where you're putting together the thing and dividing it up and making you, a pizza. Exactly. A pizza or a pie, depending a pie. upon which version you've right. got. Um, but this one, Pandoria, came out as a board game. And then, of course, with the advent of all of these roll and rights that we've got we have Pandoria Merchants. Now, um, this is really hard as a roll and write to the point where I think it's almost too hard. It's too hard for, for me. Shelly. Yeah, and kind of hard for me and to get our, your minds around. Because one of the things that's interesting, so every, you've got a board that you're playing on here, um, and it's separated out two, three, or four, depending upon the, si the number of players mm -hmm. here. But then you also have your own board that you are writing on and um, these are cards down here that you can buy but the interesting aspect is that you get um, you you draw on the board then you get to buy things then you collect resources and yeah. that out of turn situation kind of throws us off and it, it's I mean it's an interesting twist but it was almost too hard for us. And we apologize, the chickens, chickens are making, um, noises. making noises as we go forward. Um, what I would say is if you really enjoy the Roll and Write series, but you want one that's really hard, well, this one is definitely for you. Yeah, Pandoria Merchants. Yeah. All right, what's your next one, honey? Well, the next one I'd like to talk about is called On Tour. Now, now I think we may have talked about this before. We have talked before. about this yeah. one before. We played this one many times. It's really a fun game. It's by Chad Deshaun. Chad Deshaun. And the um, the 
Boardgametables.com board is the publisher. Tables, yeah, exactly. Right, dot com <laughs> is the, um, the publisher of this right. game. And what's really cool about this game is it's um, a game where you write on the actual board with a pen. And you have the, everybody's got one of these boards. Everyone has one of these, and then we you flip over two cards. I should have gotten the dice you, out because you flip they over are, three cards actually. Right, and, and then you're going to use two. And of you're going to use two of them, and it'll tell you the location in which you are to to write your number. We, there's very big, big dice. Yes, they're really chunky. cool, very chunky. And um, if you happen to put it in, say North Dakota, where it's indicated, it. then you get a circle, and that's going to give you more points. And your your job or your goal is to try to go from ascending or descending order, depending on where you want to have your um, line go. Yes, you're tra so, you're doing a tour, and yeah. you have to go from the lowest number to the highest number on your board consecutively, or if it's the same number, you got to keep it going. So yeah, yeah that's so, that's the key. And then you could have two numbers that are the same, and that's mm -hmm. okay if they're next to each other too. Right. But it's just trying to get your head around how to do that because you know normally i would think go to the from the west coast to the east coast but you might be going all over the place you yeah, know so it's, true. it's a lot of fun and a very yeah. quick game yeah we do it's, it's one of those yeah. right before dinner yeah. dinner's in the oven let's hold off and let's play a quick game so that's on tour all right um a lot of our games and all the rest of these are pretty heavy games not that pandoria merchants wasn't heavy, no, that's heavy. but <laughs> these are all really heavy games yeah. so hence the reason why we had fewer games this month. So the first one here, small box, but as many of you already know of uh, Shem Phillips games with this very distinct art style. Um, Viscounts of the West Kingdom is the latest in this series. Um, many of these games have been um, uh, uh, worker placement. This one really is a deck builder. Um, and of course I got the Kickstarter, so that means Really cool coins. Oh, um, I right. would have to say the best money in any game. That's yeah, my yeah, opinion. exactly. It's really cool. But money. you start with a hand of cards, um, actually a deck of cards. You have three of these in your hand. You are going to every round, pat. you'll have some that are played in front of you on your player board, I think three, and then you're gonna slide them over, play your next one, and then um, you are gonna move your uh, Viscount around the board, based on the number that's here. There are little icons which determine how strong a particular action is. There's four different types of icons. And then there are um, possible when you play the card, or in this case, as long as this card's in play, or sometimes when you discard a card, you get another action associated with it. Um, there are uh, four actions in the game. I will say, this game took us four hours to play the first time we played it. It really took some think around and we didn't, we figured out there's only one way or two possible ways that the game, uh, it game end is triggered and you're decreasing this deck, but there are only a few ways to get those cards out of the deck, the debts and deeds. And mm -hmm. so we were like, oh my God, we finally did. Yeah. We've played it a few yeah. more times since because, but man, that first game we were like, do we really want to even try again? <laughs> oh my God. But we got it in under yeah. a 90 minutes for our other games, but right. we were really pushing it. Now, there's going to be a podcast later on this month where we talk about this in more detail. But um, it's a good game. Um, and if you like his games, then you'll probably, probably really, really like, like it. it yeah. um, I, I think for us, it's good, but not great. Yeah, I mean, if you do it quickly enough, yeah. you will like it. Yeah. And um, we would recommend in our opinion. Some of the other games that, that we're you, gonna talk about right well, now. Well, <laughs> that you play it with people who don't suffer from oh like, my God. too much no. analysis paralysis, because there's a lot to think about. It's a very big game. Yeah, don't but play it, it with it is four. a huge game that once you've played it once, you can, with yeah. the two player, get it down into about an hour and a half, and yeah. then you'll feel really happy about it. Yeah, they're it. lying on the box when they say 60 to 90 minutes, especially with four players. Yeah, I'm just saying. I don't, okay. I don't think that would be possible. All right, what do you got next, time? So the other game that we had opportunity to play many times was called Monasterium. It's by Arvo de Fuller. Fuller, yeah. Fuller. And um, <laughs> this is from, let's see, the... the DLP. DLP. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, yeah. That's, that's very good. And uh, this game was a lot of fun. You are, of course, sending your um, your novices, your novices, your novice uh, monks, yes, no, no, monks out into different um, cathedrals no, and monasteries. Monasteries. Hence monasterium. Oh yes, and you are building um, 
stained, stained glass, glass windows. windows. And uh, the way the game works, it's a, it's a really an awesome dice kind of fest game where you um, you have all each one of these spots, um, you put your monk mm -hmm. and if you are able to put your monk onto the um, into a monastery, then other powers open up. So right. when each one of these, these corresponds um, to a yeah, dice value. Dice value. So you know, if you roll a one, that allows you to, if you have the the uh, materials necessary, right. allows you to put your uh, monk onto the board. Mm -hmm. And as you do that, you get to decide which powers you want to also open up in case you don't want to use the primary action of your die. You can use the alter alternative actions of your die. And then, of course, you build a, a stained glass window and then it allows you to get goods or portraits or... Yeah, the different um, resources yeah, that you collect. Yeah, the different yeah. resources. In Pretty the straightforward game. game. Um, interesting with the dice rolling, but I think uh, as we talked about it again, another podcast that's coming up, it's a little bit fragile just in terms of if you don't get that ones rolled, which is kind of your main action, mm. which is getting the monks mm. out, it can be a little bit fragile and problematic because all the rest of the actions, except for sixes, which are wild, are pretty um, uh, are, are just collecting the resources. All right, next is... Merv, the heart of the Silk Road. This is a game of um, where you are wandering a path around a grid of five by five buildings. Um, you are claiming ownership of those buildings and triggering the actions in a row or column that your uh, character winds up in. You also have cool little wooden camels that you're going to use to possibly gain start player or um, move uh, or gain stuff from the camel market which is in the middle of the board etc and um, each of the the buildings have a different action associated with them maybe it's that you're going to go up in the um, the uh, the mosque, maybe you're going to gain favors, maybe you're going to go over to the trading, uh, the trading or yeah, the caravan area, yeah. all different possibilities, and you're trying to move these things forward as you go, um, and you do it in three, uh, three consecutive rounds, and then you're done with the game. Pretty straightforward, we liked it. Um, and there's some interesting um, uh, give and take because you can use an opponent's uh, or I should say, a row in which you're triggering the opponent's houses which rather means than that your you've own. Locked that row for the, your opponents, and exactly. you've gotten to do all the great things that that but that they um, right. kind of work towards. But the the other opponent does still get things if you do decide to use use um, their stuff. Use their stuff if they've if had they've upgraded done some buildings. Upgraded exactly. things, but yeah. the amount of upgrading would probably be kind of small. Right. So you really wouldn't get too much. Right. But there is also a neutral player for In, a two-player two player game, yeah. and you can always access those instead right. of you know That's doing true. your opponents. And yeah, it's, it's fun. There's 3D walls that you're building around the city, so because at the end of the mm. second and third uh, year, there's barbarian invasion, and so it's it's really solid game. Again, this is sorry from Osprey Games and designed by Fabio Lopiano. All right. Well, the other game that we played many times is by Uwe Rosenberg called. Holler Tau. Yes, you got it. And this is from Lookout Games, and it's got expert level. It's very challenging, challenging <laughs> games, as you would expect from any, or no, not all. Ubi has... Light I games, mean, Bonanza, Patchwork, etc. Yeah, I mean, there's some lighter games, but if you, you know some of his heavier games, this happens to be one of the heavier games. Definitely, definitely. Uh, you've never seen these before. <laughs> no, this Look, isn't she, all of his games. Wheat, everything. She, sheep and weed and all of the, the, the you know, you're going to be farming. Yeah, of course. What else would you be doing of in course. an Uwe Rosenberg game? Um, but there's some really, this is a cool game and we liked it a lot. Yeah, we did. Um, it's really interesting because you have your own personal board and then you have um, your house and it tells you how many um, workers you're going to have. So basically, mm -hmm. Somewhat like how many actions you're going to have, but sometimes it takes more to uh, workers action, to yeah. trigger them, depending on how popular the actions are. But as you go along, this keeps sliding because you have some some buildings here that come up to the the house, and you have to keep moving them over by getting a bunch of wheat or a bunch of, of different Wool resources. or hides. Or, or if you can't hops. seem to do that, you're hoping that you've gotten some jewelry, which becomes your wild yes, to be able to true. move them over. But everybody needs the same things. Yeah. So you're all wanting to go to the same places. Oh, all yeah. of the spots on the board that you go to 
are really great. Yeah. Um, but they are going to focus how you play, right. and you just want to keep moving this over so you can eventually get a lot of victory points. Yes. As well as have more pieces to do more actions. Yeah. Uh, so I, the game keeps building. We love this game. Yeah, it's this great. is one of my favorite Uwe Rosenberg games. I must yeah, say, it I is. Really, my, really I think it's. It. One yeah. of my favorite too. And so that and the heavy, and yes. heavy, heavy arena. Right. Probably. I mean, of the games that we played this uh, month, Holler Tau and then this next one are probably our two strong favorites. So this mm -hmm. last one is Praga Kaput Regni. This is from Vladimir Suchi, and it is, I think, an amazing game. This is a follow-up to Underwater Cities, which for us was kind of underwhelming. At least for two players, we didn't really like it. But he also did, what, Pulsar 2849? Mm, that's great. And, and yeah. I really like that one. This one is amazing in its 3D-ness. So you have everything from oh your player board that has these 3D dials and spots for little uh, wooden cubes that as you hit that and move beyond it, then you get that wooden cube and the dial moves. So this is your resources. You have... Two columns here that at the end of the game multiply resources that go over here and if you trigger these you can get um, your gold or you can get uh, uh, different resources that come into play there so this is really cool but then on top of that you got eggs yeah mm -hmm. they uh, the story is that the bridge the charles bridge that crosses the river in prague they used eggs as part of the mortar and it's one of the reasons why it stood the test of time mm -hmm. but then also now you don't need to play with these but there are two 3d the uh hunger wall and then the castle where you're moving pieces along these uh, little squares and all boat so both um, sideways and, and vertically up. and up and then of course you got scoring as you go higher but also the ability to as you move over one of the other scoring mechanisms that is in the game it is very very cool amazing from Vladimir Suchi and Rio Grande games we just really really love uh, it one of the best parts of the game is how you get your actions yeah and there's a turning dial in it and um, there's you have you can if they've been on the dial longer they are you get bonuses you get things or if you've just barely gotten into the area you got to pay yeah um, but there's two you there's two things on each of the of the tiles two possible actions yeah two, po do. two possible you actions and then one. where you took that tile from there's another action there too right exactly. and so sometimes you might be taking it just for that or yeah. for you know but it's really well done and yeah. it is a really hard exciting game Definitely. fun to play really fun to play and it's so complicated that um so that you don't have to keep track of the rounds right there's a cube that falls into the the board and yeah. you're turning it so you know oh okay now that represents we're going to the we're next going to the next season, season. Or the means, because you year, because yeah. it's so um, big and complicated right. and you're building in, in your own personal board and right. walls you that, walls on your there's personal board there's a lot board. going on and then there's where you're building in the the the, the city town. of Prague uh huh exactly uh, so there's so much that you they they he thought of everything like you would not be on, able to right. know okay now i got to switch to my to the different um, better second um, year cards, right, or, right. You know, keep switching up, yeah. and so because of that cube falling in, you like, oh, that triggers the next thing, or yeah. oh, now we only have two rounds, and the game is going to be over, and so you're trying to, you know, go as far as you can, and it's. There's so many ways to play the game, and yeah. you, will, you will like it if you want a heavy one. All right, so that's Praga Kaput Regni from Vladimir Suchi and Rio Grande Games. All right, let's do a quick review oh. here. Let's see if we can get this organized Into real the quick. right order? Yeah, exactly. Okay. All right, so first was... The first one was Canvas, and beautiful game that you could play with the family. One to five players. One to five players. 30 minutes. It's yeah, sh short, sweet, does not outstay. It's welcome. And if you want something beautiful, this is the one for you. Pandoria Merchants, probably the hardest roll and write that we've ever done. And it has that quirky bit where you write on the board, then do something and then get your resources from it so the resources aren't available till the next round and that's the thing that always kept throwing us but if you like this stuff there you go it says for a spatial genius i want to <laughs> say uh on tour by boardgametables.com and chad deshawn great no, another uh, role this in one, right i, yeah. I would have thought it would be too spatial for me but it, and it is challenging 
but it's so much fun to actually Quick. see if you can get those connections. Yeah, Viscounts of the West Kingdom, really solid game, deck building game here. Um, took us a long time to get into the first time, so realize that that's there. There are some rule vagaries that threw us also, but really solid if you're into this type of game. Yeah, definitely. This is Monasterium Arve de Fuller. Fuller, yes. I'm so sorry. Arve I de all... Fuller. Fuller. I always butcher German names. All right, DLP, DLP. Yeah. But, you know, if you want some a bunch of dice where dice can do a multitude of things and you want to put monks out into your not churches but monasteries, go for it. <laughs> there you go. All right, Merv. This is uh, the Heart of the Silk Road from Fabio Lopiano. Solid game where you've triggering uh, actions based on different um, houses and it that ver is variable from game to game. So pretty interesting in that regard. This is Uwe Rosenberg's Hollertau, uh, one of our favorite Uwe Rosenberg games. We definitely recommend you um, try it if you like farming. <laughs> you, should always always farming. Try, exactly. you should always try his games. And finally, Praga Kaput Regni. Awesome game from Vladimir Suchi and Rio Grande Games. All right, that'll do it for this month. I hope you guys are having an amazing start to your March. We look forward to talking to you every week on Wine, Music, and Games, as well as on the podcast, our audio podcast at garrettsgames.com. Have an amazing week. Sponsor the podcast and everything on uh, patreon.com slash garrettsgames. And otherwise, take care of yourselves. Stay safe. Shots in arms. They're coming, guys. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye.